Use of a built-up steel section in any commercial or industrial project is very common. As per the design requirements, if the available hot roll sections are not sufficient or economic, then we need to use built-up or plate gutter section. There are different ways to define a built-up section instead, which can be further used for design. But do you know, if you select any incorrect method, design results might be inaccurate or incomplete? Hello, I am Surajit Ghosh and in this video, I will discuss about different methods available instead to define a built-up eye or plate gutter section for design and what are the advantage and disadvantage of each method. I will cover only the built-up eye section in this video which is widely used in the industry. Rest of the shapes will be covered in another video. I know you are still thinking about the incorrect design results. So before we start discussing about different methods, let's take a small example. In this TAD model, I have created two goalpost frames with same column section and same applied load from the global X and Y direction. These frames are identical. Only difference is in the first frame, I have assigned a taper section with same start and end depth. Basically, this is a 300 mm depth I section with 8 mm wave. In the second structure, I have assigned a user table wide flange section which has same flange and wave dimension. For this section, inertia and area values are calculated using the calculate button. These members are designed using IS-800-2007 code. I have only assigned STP parameter to declare it as a built-up section and track parameter. Check the design outputs. Critical design ratio and condition are same for both these members. Now check the detail output from the ratio table. Bending and interaction ratio are same, but minor axis shear ratio is different. For the tapered member, the ratio is greater than 1, whereas the wide flange section passes the design check for the same shear force. That means the shear capacity must be different and we can confirm this from the detailed design report. See, the major and minor axis shear capacity values are different between these sections. This proves that though the section dimensions are same, still due to improper section definition, section capacity might be different which may lead to member failure. If you want to know why there is a difference in CR capacity, you need to watch this video till the end. Do you know there are six different methods available instead by which we can add a user defined or built up I section? We can add it directly in the standard section library by specifying the dimension and properties, create a user table section with section type wide flange or I section, and specify the dimension. We can also draw the profile in section widget or in the free sketch mode and import that instead as a general section with equivalent I section dimension. Finally, we can define it as a tipper section with same or different start and end depth. Each of this method has some advantage and disadvantage. I will discuss all this in detail. In this structure, I want to use an I section with 700 mm depth and 10 mm thick web as the gantry. We know that this section is not available in the standard Indian or American section database. But we can easily add this section in the standard library from the section database manager. Here we need to expand the relevant country table and add all dimensions along with few necessary property values like the area and inertia value. I have already discussed the detailed procedure how to add a new section in the standard library using section database manager or how to edit any existing property in my previous series on customization of standard steel database. You can go through those videos for more details. 
one of the major benefit of this process is once we add a section in the standard database, we can use it in any model. We can open any stat model and assign this section to the relevant member directly from the section catalog. Also, we can transfer this modified database to other colleagues. So we have the flexibility in terms of data transfer and reusability of data, which saves lot of time for any large project. Apart from that, we can design this section using any design code with check code comment. And also program can use this section as an optimum section during section selection. This is now a part of the standard database and can be used during section optimization process. Only problem of this method is we need to calculate and specify some of the properties like all area and moment of inertia values are mandatory. But we can use any custom Excel file or even the section wizard to calculate these properties. So in a way, we can overcome this disadvantage. Next method, the user table options. In the user table manager, there are several options available to create a user defined section of any shape. For I section, we have two options white flange and I section. There are few differences between these two options and I'll start with the white flange section. For any white flange section, we need to define all the section dimensions and we can use this calculate button to auto generate the property values. Also, we can define a composite flange at the top of the I section like a concrete bridge cutter and additional steel cover plate at the bottom. There is no option available to define a variable depth. So this method cannot be used to create a differ profile. Once all the information are provided, we can access this section from the user table option and assign this to any member. Coming to the advantage, we can use any white flange section for member design with check code comment. Also, it can be used for optimization. We can add multiple white flange sections under a specific table and assign any section from this table. During optimization, program will use each of these sections, compare the design ratio values and select the most economic section from this table. This is one of the most useful feature of white flange section. If we are not sure whether our selected section is most economic or not, we can always create multiple sections with different dimension and use section optimization process to determine which section is most economic for any member. I have already discussed this process in the third part of steel optimization series. For white flange section, we can easily calculate the section properties from the dimension, which is very handy. Generic equations are used to calculate the properties, which is OK for cross section and inertia values. For CR area calculation, area along the Y and Z axis are calculated using these equations. As you can notice here, CR area along Y is calculated considering the overall depth of the section and CR area along Z axis is calculated considering two third area of the flange. During design, if the CR area values are available, then program use those values. And here comes the problem. Calculation of CR area varies from code to code. For example, under clause 8.4.1.1 of IS 800-2007 code, it is suggested that CR area for built up section should be calculated considering the depth of the web and area of flange. These values don't match with the CR area calculated using the generic equation for white flange section. Hence, the CR capacity value is not calculated as per the code. For CR area along the Y axis, difference is very small. But if we consider the CR area along the Z axis, one third area of the flange is not considered, which will reduce the CR capacity by considerable amount. This will obviously affect the design results. 
I will come back to this later with more clarification. For user table I section, we can define the web and flange dimension along with variable depth at start and end of the section and dimension of the composite flange if there is any. Though there is no option available to calculate the IX and CR area values, still it is not a problem as if we skip this, program will auto calculate these values during design. Though we can define a tapered profile using user table I section, still there is one major disadvantage. This section can only be used for member design using check code command. It is not possible to use this table for section selection. If we assign this section to any member and use select or select optimized command, then member design will be terminated with error. I don't prefer this method to create any uniform or tapered profile as this can be defined easily using other method. Next, we have section wizard and pre sketch mode. And these options are very useful when we use any complex shape like a cruciform I section or an inverted channel on top of an I section, which is commonly used in a gantry gutter. In section wizard, we can easily create any custom shape either using any standard section, we can join multiple sections, or by using plate. And depending on the shape, all properties including area, inertia, section modulus and radius of gyration are calculated. We can export this section to STAD as an equivalent I section. We need to export it as general type for which along with the properties, equivalent dimensions are exported. Depending on the section properties, Dimension of the flange and web of equivalent I section is auto generated and we can further use it for member design. Note that CR area values are not auto generated as it varies from code to code as mentioned earlier. We can manually specify this, else, this will be calculated during design. We can also use free sketch mode to draw the section outline or import the section from any DXF file. One of the advantage of this mode is we can specify the root radius or toe radius value. This option is not available in the section wizard and if we define the radius value that will be further used for property calculation. This section can be exported to STAT as a general I section with equivalent I section dimension and properties. If we talk about the disadvantage of section widget or free sketch mode, we can use these sections for member design using check code command. General I section design rules are followed for design, but these sections cannot be used for member selection. Also, as the original section dimension and shapes are lost, no section profile is displayed in the rendering view, which is kind of annoying. Finally, the tapered I option. Though it is meant to define sections with variable depth, still I have seen several models where a uniform I section is created with this option. I know it is very easy to define any I section using this option. No need to calculate the properties as these are calculated during analysis and design. But still, there are few disadvantages. First of all, all the sections created using this option are mentioned as tipper in the property table. It is extremely difficult to understand the section information from the name. Also, it is not possible to use this tipper section for optimization. Tipper member optimization is still not implemented instead. And if we define any uniform depth I section as tipper I, then program will not optimize this section. For tipper, as well as user table I section, section properties are calculated internally during design. And for CR area calculation, program considers the web depth and total flange area, which is in line with most of the design code. Now I think you understand why there is a difference in CR capacity between wide flange 
and tipper section. For white flange section, CR area values are calculated using the generic equation. Whereas for tipper section or user table I section, these values are calculated using the codal provision. If we consider the CR area along Z axis for white flange section, two third area is used compared to the full flange area. Hence, the CR capacity is reduced, which might be crucial for some members. As you can notice in the example model, where the section fails in CR due to lower capacity. If you have used white flange section in your model and member fails in CR, then you should revisit the design results and rectify it. To summarize, if you want to perform non-iterative member design for uniform depth built-up I section, then use the user table wide flange option with CR area value as 0. Then program will calculate the correct values during design or manually calculate the CR area values. If the section shape is complex, like a gantry garden section, then use the section wizard or free sketch mode. If the section is tapered, then it is always better to use the tapered I option rather than the user table I section. For optimum section selection, if you want to optimize your structure properly by considering user defined section along with the sections from the standard database, then it is better to calculate the properties first from the section widget or template file and add that section directly in the database. It not only provides more section selection option, but also save time when same section is used in different models. Second choice is obviously the white flange user table option with multiple sections added under a table. That's all from me today. I think now you can easily select the proper method to define a built up I section for design or optimization. Thanks for watching.